Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Dave Bitter, front-end developer at Frontman, and today I have another Friday tip for you. We're gonna have a look at the experimental API called the Presentation API, uh, which you can use to well, cast uh, screens to uh, big projectors or network connected uh, televisions. So it's similar to uh, a Google Chromecast or Apple AirPlay or Miracast, DLNA. There are a bunch of these protocols uh, to do this. Uh, and this API uh, basically can do all of them uh, in one simple singular uh, way of doing it. If we have a quick look uh, at the documentation for the presentation API, uh, you can see, well, it's experimental. They already mentioned this here uh, and you need HTTPS uh, to be able to work with it uh, at all. So uh, if you scroll down a bit, we see we have uh, a bunch of methods available for us to work with. Uh, and if we scroll all the way to the bottom, uh, we can see the browser compatibility. So as you can see, the browser compatibility is uh, well, so-so. Uh, of course, here on Chrome, it's uh, well supported, uh, as well as Oprah, Chrome, Android, Samsung Internet. Uh, uh, but yeah, the big players that are missing, of course, are Firefox and Safari. So I prepared a small demo uh, to showcase this functionality using my own TV right behind me uh, with my Chromecast. So I created a small demo, uh, as you can see here, that consists of two pages. Uh, on the one hand, we have this sort of controller page with some buttons uh, and inputs uh, to input data to actually send to the screen. Uh, the other page is the receiving end, uh, which for now just shows your message here. Uh, and it will also display that uh, on the Chromecast when we start the connection. So when I hit presentation request start, uh, my Google Chrome is gonna say, okay, Dave, I found your Chromecast, uh, a couple of Google Homes and a Samsung TV. So we can select our Chromecast. Uh, and right now uh, this page is being casted uh, on my TV. Uh, what we can then do is uh, we'll send a message to it. So let's say Friday tips. Hit send and then the screen updates showing that message. Um, what we can then do is, well, we can close this connection or terminate the entire connection. So the difference between this is that um, what I can do is say, I'm gonna take this demo, open an incognito tab, uh, and get uh, my connection ID here in the console log, copy it, uh, enter it here, and also connect from this incognito tab. So what I can do now is say, hello from incognito, uh, send that, and now the screen will update showing this message. Um, so you can use uh, both of these at the same time. Um, and that's why you can yeah, close a singular connection uh, without terminating the entire session because others might be still uh, wanting to connect uh, and send data. Um, so I can close this one as I don't no longer need it. And from here, I can still send a message because I still have an active connection. connection. So I can send a message like, hello, again, from the controller page. And I've sent that, it will update it again. Uh, and in the end, uh, I can close the entire uh, connection with the, uh, with the Chromecast, uh, and it will actually close it on the TV. So this is a fairly simple demo of uh, what you can do. We just display some text uh, on there, but you can imagine that, uh, well, there are a lot of applications for a technique like this. Uh, so let's say you're, uh, personal trainer in a gym and you might want to have a controller part where you have all the exercises and maybe a timer uh, that you can set uh, and then start it. It costs to all the screens and everybody can view it and follow along. Um, but for instance, when you're I know, a salesperson, so you might be selling kitchens or cars or mortgages, uh, you don't want to just keep on flipping your screen around. Uh, you can make it easy uh, to have an application and uh, just cast to the person uh, across from the table uh, what you want them to see. Uh, and naturally, uh, you can well do something with a presentation itself. So you might have some slides on there. 
uh, and you uh, hit uh, next and back and uh, just have control over that second remote screen. So you can do all of this already. We're using WebSocket servers, uh, which are well, first then more complicated, but you also have to actually host this uh, socket server somewhere. Um, the data needs to grow through that server. And right now with using the presentation API, you can actually send it just over the network, which should be a bit quicker than going over a WebSocket server uh, and uh, as well easier for you as a developer. So let's have a look at the code behind this demo uh, to see how everything works. As you can see here, I have two HTML pages. Uh, one is the controller part, one is the receiver part. If we have a look at the controller part, we can see that we have, uh, well, some buttons to uh, start the presentation request, to send a message, terminate it, reconnect, uh, what we just saw in the demo. Uh, and if we look at the JavaScript part, you can see that we say, okay, I want to have a presentation request. I call new presentation request. Uh, and I can pass it uh, a URL to a page. So in this case, that's the receiver page because that's what we want to show on the screen. Uh, what we then do is uh, say, okay, I want to have the uh, presentation request with this receiver part to be the default uh, request for, uh, the, for the receiving end. So when you uh, use just regular use the cost in the browser, uh, which is just uh, in Chrome, uh, you will see this page uh, by default. What we then do is uh, we listen to uh, an event uh, to say, okay, I want to start a presentation request uh, and then we do some logging once that is done. Uh, we listen to whether the connection is available uh, to again uh, update uh, uh, our console logs so we can see what is happening. Uh, finally, we yeah we can send a message. So we send uh, whatever we uh, uh, typed in the input. Uh, so what we do is well we get the message itself, uh, and then we say in on the presentation connection send a JSON stringified version of this message. Uh, finally, uh, we listen. We have a, a close button to close the connection. So we call close uh, and the terminate one. Um, in the end, we have the reconnect function that I showed uh, with the uh, having multiple uh, controllers sending data to uh, the single receiver. Uh, and again, here you can see that uh, well, we have we get the presentation ID from the input, uh, and then we call reconnect. So the API itself is pretty straightforward. It has these simple methods uh, that are always promises, uh, and you can do some logging to keep track on what is happening. Finally, uh, we can also have a look uh, at uh, whether, which presentation displays are available, so whether it has a, a screen or not uh, to cast to. On the receiver part, uh, it's a bit simpler, of course. So what we say is whenever the DOM content is loaded, the page is loaded, uh, well, we check whether uh, the receiver uh, is available uh, once it is. Uh, we list all the connections uh, and for every connection uh, whenever the connection is available uh, we add it over here um, so here we have uh, the connection id uh, and we listen for uh, the message so that's the message that we send from the controller with the uh, typed uh, text uh, from the user uh, well we've done json parse that json uh, and we add the message to the screen. So right now this demo is super simple. Uh, we basically just have the text that comes in uh, and a bit of styling to make it look a bit nicer. Um, but of course you can yeah, do whatever you want. Uh, so it doesn't have to be this single piece of text. It could be a link to a video or th this page could be an entire application with uh, uh, a, a playlist and it's your imagination. And there we have it. So this was a short overview of the connection API. And as you can see, it looks a bit like how you would work with uh, WebSockets. So if you're familiar with that, using an API like this uh, will be uh, a breeze. Uh, but yeah, it just exposes some simple uh, methods that you can call to connect, send, uh, and listen uh, to events, uh, and then display it. So after that, it's up to your imagination what you can do with it. Uh, but I recommend that you 
just try this out. Uh, try to see if you can just send a simple text and then try to create a, a cool application uh, that you can use using this uh, experimental technique. And that's all for today. So thank you for watching. Bye.